Hello and welcome to this student life talk. My name's Kieran, I'm a third year single honours history student. I am from Newcastle under Lamb originally, which is where Kiel is located. So these are all pictures of A-level textbooks, and this is when I get onto a little bit about what it's like to study history. So the reason I include these is because I didn't realise that history wasn't all about what's written in the textbook. All these textbooks are written by one or two people, um, and they're given to all students on the course, and this is what you're told to learn. The same could probably be said for maths, I don't really know, but I like to include maths textbooks so the maths people don't feel left out by all the history talk. Um, but these are all the books that I used in my first year and year or two at uni um, and the reason I include them is because they're all by different historians but some of them have got a very similar take on the same issue so um, The Four Major Persons Society by R.I. Moore, The Corruption of Angels by Mark Pegg, Medieval Church by Lynch and Adamo and um, Europe in the High Middle Ages are all written on the same topic but all of those historians have got a different view on what happened. Some of them are slightly different, some of them are very different. Um, and that is why I chose history. I didn't really realise that was what we were doing all the time, but it was what really interested me and what makes it something that I really enjoy to study now. Um, so you might have someone like uh, R.I. Moore, who does not agree with um, another historian. Um, that means that they have a little bit of a debate in the historiography, as we call it, and then it can cause some arguments between them and this is one of the reasons why I loved history so on the screen there'll be a little thing a little um, picture of a reading that I did so this is from an article and they've said that it is with some regret that I write the following I normally like a good argument and there's nothing I like better than to argue about the year 1000 even when the counter arguments are silly ill-informed and misconceived and then this is by Richard Lands who has decided then to footnote and reference exactly who he thinks is silly, ill-informed and misconceived. And it's this kind of little drama, the back and forth between historians that you can actually really see when you read it. And that's what really makes it an interesting thing to study because you get to see where the arguments come from, where they go to, and then put yourself in the argument and make your arguments about why you think that you are where you are. And that is what I really enjoy. Our lecturers really encourage us to do that as well. And um, the lecturer who runs the module that that reading is taken from, um, she actually had her PhD exam done by R.I. Moore, whose book I said about before, and who Richard Lance was disagreeing with. So it's really interesting to see how all these people sort of come together and they are actually all, sort of, they all know each other and they all do argue on the same things and look at the same things and issues as well. So this is a really boring slide for some people, but it was really important to me because I didn't realise before I came to uni that actually it wasn't all about one final end of year exam. So this is how one module of mine was assessed with a group presentation, the participation seminar discussion and, oh, gone too quickly. The group presentation, the participation seminar discussion and the 2000 word essay. So the group presentation is what you probably think of. It's you giving a presentation to a group of people um, with another group of people. So you can normally be in a group of about three or four and you would present on the sources and the readings for that day or that week. And it can be really useful in revision as well as learning because you get to really see what the arguments are about and really get to learn them so that when you're presenting you don't feel like a fool when you're talking about them. And the other thing is the participation seminar discussion. So that is really useful because it does encourage people to speak and it also makes you feel a bit more confident giving answers because you will get marked on it and therefore you know if what you were saying was right or wrong. So it's not all about that one final um, exam that people talk about. My dad talked about it he went to uni in the 80s and was like, you'll have one exam and that's it at the end of the time. But that is just not the case at all. So really, when you're looking at modules, I recommend that you have a look at what exactly the assessment method is. Now, this is my favourite building on campus. It's the library. And as a history student, you'll use it quite a lot. Um, so all the books that you'd need are in there. You can request them. You can um, get them all requested and then just pick them up when you go in. And there's all kinds of study spaces as well. It's mainly focused on individual study, but you can do more collaborative stuff as well. Um, and there's silent study areas. So when you get round to visiting Kiel for the first time, definitely have a look in there as well. One of the things that's been really important to my time at uni is being a student ambassador um, because we do so many different things. It's a really good way of earning money, but it's also a really good way of making friends with people. So these are some of the different events I've worked on, whether it's graduation in that big costume, um, welcome week, we provide support student services, that's me sat at the desk, or outreach events with um, schools and different groups, which is what that giant game of operation is about. I definitely recommend, if you do end up coming to Kiel, become a student ambassador, it's one of the best things you could do. So these are all different people that can be student ambassador, it is anyone, 
So there's people on this picture that are from first year, second year, third year, foundation year. So literally anything all from pharmacy to history to medicine. So it's a really flexible job. So it can fit into anyone's schedule. And then this is the final picture of Ingenium Ambassador. We also got to work on this really amazing residential called Cluedo with a K because it's at Kiel if you get it. Um, and that was really fun because we got to do a murder mystery along with two schools in the local area. So we really got to get involved as well. So that's really one of the most fun things I've probably done since I started at uni.